Finally, we arrived at the big pink M in the Chuka. It was 45 degrees in the water bag and climbing. Ah, oh, so thank God for the water fountain with a pool in the middle of the courtyard as we drove through the arch. I looked longingly at the pool and the fountain with a little wooden bridge. God, it was hot. Found, it always, found also, as always, my room was on the second floor. Dragged my somewhat overstuffed suitcase up the stairs. Finally, I found my room, second floor, and managed to negotiate through the door. Having got the second floor room, I wanted to see with what was the view. Was it worth the sweating, dragging the bloody suitcase up those bloody stairs? Well, when I drew back the curtains and looked out, I was hoping for a magnificent panoramic view. Oh, no, there were, there were no long swaying grasses. All wildebeest grazing as they wandered across the Serengeti. No, that was not to be so. I looked out <coughs> on my view. I was greeted by the sight of many things amongst them. I could see these big yellow archers. What the hell are they? When, when, I, <coughs> when I inquired, I was told there was something to do with America. Possibly an agency for the American Embassy appears to have a lot of activity. So I concluded that a lot of people were out on holidays or well, a lot of Americans were trying to migrate here. Even the possibility they want to train and style them in uh, Ashuka. Well, <coughs> good luck to them with that one. I don't like their chances. Uh, <coughs> so I satisfied myself with the view. I settled down to my room, which I shared with another chap. I got the double bed, of course, which is huge. Big enough for me and my pet. The room as well, rather huge. And the bathroom as well was huge. Thick towels. Uh, big enough for me and Basil. Hmm. Uh, though the shower cube might be a bit on a tight squeeze. Well, that's with me and Basil. Uh, not that uh, the cubicle was too small, it's just that I need to lose a bit of weight. Uh, <coughs> I did not bring my pet Basil. It was a bit troublesome when she starts snoring. It really can be too much for some people, putting up with that trumpeting like snoring. <coughs> Then she wants to go out on walkies in the middle of the night. It's really difficult not to be, not to disturb other persons in the room. So hard to do it quietly. Basil did not mean to be noisy. She just can't help it. Getting up down those stairs quietly is quite a struggle. <coughs> the problem of finding something to relieve herself, uh, and of course of cleaning up after her, is a big job. It requires a wheelie bin and a large shovel. Well, that's what that's what you need when Basil. That's what you need with Basil. He eats a lot, hell of a lot. You know, what goes in, goes in one end has to come out the other. The other problem with Basil is he gets a bit noisy when she gets excited. She can scare the absolute Christ out of dogs, big and small. When when she reaches over the fence to say hello. The real main problem is that others may not understand, sharing with you may not understand your desire to share your bed with your pet. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. When you have a pet, no one wants to share your room with you. So it's a, I think it's a real problem. I think the real problem is, is Basil snoring. Hmm, yes. It can be very loud, even disturb people in the next room, which can result in banging on the wall and some unsavoury comments and some very bad language comes through the wall, which greatly upsets Basil, as he really does get upset by bad language. I too, as I am it very hard to get her back to sleep again. I feel I'd like to send Basil over to bang on their door, so they'll be quiet, especially when they answer the door. God knows I, I need my sleep. My beauty sleep is so hard to get her to sleep. Without a music to love her off. Sleep. Yes, the first time they woke her up, I gave, took her out for walkies, God knows. Every time they wake her up, I have to take her out for walkies. God knows, a shovel, a nippy wheel have been hard enough to find in the middle of the night. This is just some of the reasons why I do not take Basil, my pet elephant, with me most of the time. Um... <coughs> Well, it was been a stinking hot night day, and it was a stinking hot night, and the air conditioning just was not cutting it. Well, I decided it was time for a swim. 
It was the early hours of the morning, I thought. I'll sneak down the pool with my towel and my blue polka dot shorty pyjamas with embroidered red J and slip in the pool altogether. So there I was, sneaking tiptoe across the courtyard, looking around. Yes, it's all clear. It's all quiet. And we proceeded to the gate. Bugger! Some thoughtful person had locked the gate. I could only assume it was to stop people like me from skinny dipping in the middle of the night. Not to be beaten, I contemplated the thought of climbing over the fence for my swim. <coughs> but the pointy bits on the top of the fence sort of put me off the idea as I contemplated how I could find a plausible explanation I got st- how, how I got stuck on the top of the fence. Yes, I wouldn't explain it. You understand you explain that one. <coughs> how could I explain that I got stuck on top of the fence to the nice police person, fire brigade officer or ambulance? Well, the possibilities didn't even bear thinking about. Uh, more important, the possibility I might ventilate some part of my blue polka dot shorty pyjamas with embroidered red jade. But not to be defeated, and it was so very hot night. <coughs> I needed a lovely cool bath. Uh, the air conditioning in my room was just not cutting it. I walked back across the courtyard feeling somewhat dejected and very hot, bloody hot. When the central garden bed, complete with pool and fountain and wooden bridge, came into view, next thing I remember found myself as if in a dream standing on the little wooden bridge in my blue polka dot pajama pajamas with embroidered red jay, staring long at the cool, refreshing water. Would I change it? Would I chance it? Was anyone awake? Would they see me? I looked around. Everywhere was dead quiet. In fact, it was as dead as a, de- as a dead dodo bird. The coast was clear. I waited a few moments to be sure. Then spread my towel on the little wooden bridge, slipped off my blue polka dot shorty pyjamas with embroidered red jay, folded them neatly and climbed into the cool, refreshing water of the pond, letting out a gentle murmur of pleasure as I surrendered to the cool water. God, it's good. The water's raining down on my head. From a lovely, refreshing fountain. I thought I'm in heaven. I was enjoying this lovely cooling effect. I was careful not to splash. I did not want to have an audience at this time. I don't think anyone really wanted to see a <coughs> a big white beach whale in the middle of their <coughs> middle of the night in their courtyard. Besides, <coughs> how would I explain this, explain this? The overheating problem was not likely to go to cut it. <coughs> Just then I realised I had a more pressing problem. That was really troubling. Uh, yes. Yes. I was being... That being that I was sitting buck naked in a large pond with a fountain run by an electric submersible pump. Now you might feel quite happy sitting in a, uh, a large pond. Uh... While well, stark naked, an electrical course, electricity courses through underground cable, underwater cables. It was at this time that the memories of an unfortunate experience with an electric fence on the farm came to mind. Yes, the memories came flooding back. I remember vividly the time I unknowingly climbed over an electric fence. It was one of the most memorable experiences to hit, uh, memorable experience being hit in the nether regions with 25,000 volts. With eight milliamps, oh, thank God for the milliamps. Not once, but not twice. After which I lost all interest in the situation. I just, I might add, in in accounting as well. All I wanted to do was get off the bloody infernal thing. <clears throat> my eyes started to water as I remembered my efforts to walk in an upright position, without bow-legged gait, which, with what seemed to be an eternity, but in actual reality was only. Three to, f- oh, three to five hours, yes. Uh, but I was very tender for a number of days and had a date deep care when I sat down. So with this remarkable experience rekindled in my mind, I came to the very, cl- cl- very rapid conclusion I no longer felt hot. I didn't want to swim in the cold, cool water. I no longer found it so inviting. No, I left the pool with undignified haste why I'm being careful not to disturb anything. I really did not want to repeat of the previous experience that it was an indelibly etched on my mind. After having managed 
to extract myself facing the terrifying possibility, I now proceeded to dry myself, put on my blue polka dot toy pajama with embroidered red jay, proceeded down the bridge, thankfully, to a close escape, and then came at the end of the bridge. Damn it! A bloody little stone sticking in the soles of my feet as I stepped out of the cobblestone. I thought, bloody hell, what was worse, being electrocuted or having your feet tortured by a ton of little stones? <coughs> Like little daggers going into the soles of my feet. Finally, I managed to remove them from my feet and hobble across the courtyard. Those damn stairs are up the stairs again and into my bed. No one the wiser. And it was about then I suddenly reflected on the thought I was glad I'd not brought Basil, as she'd wanted to get in the pool too. And it would have been a tight squeeze. It's not. And it would not even bear thinking about, oh my god, if she'd been electrified. As well, it been one hell of a din. I mean, the thought of an elephant charging around the courtyard, frumming mad, <laughs> madly at 3 a.m. in the morning, and me, me stark, stark naked out there on the pool, it was a bit hard to imagine to, how to explain to the nice police person that I was just a bit hot. I really don't think that would cut it. Uh, so, so we very much thank you. I, br uh, I did very, very thank you, thankful I didn't bring her. Lovely as she is, I fell into a deep, blissful sleep. I were dreams of my lovely pet battle. Can be so much fun to be with. In next morning, the staff outdid themselves again with an absolutely ravishing breakfast with every conceivable delight. I have to say, I'm sure it would even satisfy a pack of ravishing, hungry teenage boys. Thank you to all the staff of the Mirador in the in the sugar, providing us with a wonderful time and service. Now you want it. You are asking the one burning question: Did he really get in the pond in in pond buck night in the middle of the night? Was he alone? Well, you see, I'm a gentleman, so I can't possibly tell you that. It will have to remain one of the great unsolved mysteries of the great big pick him in in the sugar. Uh, a disclaimer at the end here. Uh, any reference to any person living or dead, or even partially alive or dead, is absolutely without foundation and co totally coincidental. <laughs>